Toronto Raptors championship defense has played a crucial role in helping them win games at an elite level. They're second in the NBA in both defensive rating and defensive field goal percentage. It's no secret that the Raptors roster is filled with active, rangy, and athletic stoppers. What makes them one of the league's most potent defenses is an aggressive, tough-minded group that is disciplined and has completely bought into the fundamentals. This is part one of the series and will focus on the foundational building blocks of their defense. Meanwhile, part two would look specifically at transition and pick and roll defense. We will also examine a couple of unconventional methods the Raptors have used this season to slow teams down. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified when part two is released. Raptors perimeter defenders do a great job of moving their feet on penetration to keep themselves in the play. They minimize blow bys by staying in stance and botting up on drivers to stay connected. Never giving the offense space or time to get to their spots forces them into uncomfortable and off-balance takeoffs. Add to this the length and athleticism of the Raptors and it results in a high degree of difficulty finishes in one-on-one -on -one scenarios for opponents. Rim finishes are the most valued shots for offenses. Preventing them becomes a key ingredient for successful defenses. With only 4.9 blocks per game as a team, the Raptors sit in 17th place in the league in this category. Interestingly though, they still rank third overall in defensive field goal percentage at the rim. While they may not block shots at a high level inside, the Raptors change and alter a high percentage of them with well-timed and well-executed vertical contests at the rim. On the occasion when a perimeter defender gets beaten, a disciplined and well-positioned backline is there to clean up. The Raptors have a number of respectable shot blockers inside, but they're actually much more effective at altering shots instead of blocking them. They have perfected the art of the vertical contest, sprinting and help and walling up either in the air or on the ground to take away straight line drives to the rim. The focus is not to actually block the shot, but to vertically get into the airspace and change the finish. With arms straight up, the length of the Raptors is only magnified in these scenarios. The guards and wings are also important pieces of this equation as they are quick to rotate in relation to their responsibility on the floor. Timing the jump is extremely important and the Raptors consistently show discipline in being the second off the floor and not getting shot faked. Pay close attention to Rondé Hollis Jefferson's hip turn and sprint to position. He displays terrific instincts and fundamentals, doesn't slide his feet or get out of stands to get to the drive. The Raptors add another variable to their defense in that they help off the strong side corners at times. Due to their instinct, length, and athleticism, even with shooters spotting up behind them, they're confident in their ability to cover ground. Toronto's 6th in the league in charges drawn per game, and Kyle Lowry sits in first place at 0.58 per game himself. Chargers speak not only to a team's defensive positioning and awareness, but also their willingness to put their bodies on the line. Seeing a mix of Raptors step in to take charges is a direct reflection on the defensive culture of the organization. While drawn charges are incredibly important as their gain possession, they may be just as important in what they do to attackers entering the lane. Knowing Lowry's in the paint, helping on the ball adds a variable that in a lot of cases forces an off-balance finish. Lowry baits the offense into thinking he's getting in the position to take a charge and he then releases his arms up. Savvy veteran move to tilt the playing field. After taking away rim finishes, the next key component is defending the three-point line. Maybe the most impressive piece of the Raptors championship defense is that they're able to couple their NBA second best defense at the rim with the league's best defensive three-point percentage. Taking away rim finishes and getting out to shooters is an extremely difficult task and speaks further to the quality of personnel and principles on the Raptors. Toronto is second in the league in contesting three-pointers at 28 contests per game. This means that they're flying at shooters, getting in the air and into their vision. Each contest results in a defender leaving the floor and ideally getting out to the shooting hand to avoid going across the body and fouling. They're able to do this while covering long distances because of their speed and length, but more importantly, full trust that if they get lifted, a teammate will be there to help and slow the ball. Playing freely and with confidence helps defenders anticipate and stay ahead of the play rather than react and always play a step behind. Another piece of the package that is vital to the Raptors championship defense is their overall activity on that end. They're second in the league in defensive turnover percentage, steals, and deflections per game. Applying pressure on the ball and aggressively attacking it allows them to force turnovers at a high rate because it puts ball handlers on their heels. Much the same way that they stay in the play to contest at the rim, the Raptors also swipe at the ball looking to poke it away when the opportunity presents itself. With constant hand activity, they're able to not only deflect the ball to force steals, but also force passes to be slightly off target, which buys their teammates more time to recover. 
a relentless attack on the ball with constant activity and energy away from it are staples of the Raptors championship defense. They're able to synthesize that aggression with precise execution to put themselves into an elite category and to continue winning games at a high level. Thanks for joining us for part one of the series. Stay tuned for part two where we'll look closer at the Raptors transition defense, how they defend the pick and roll, and also some of the unconventional methods the Raptors have used this season to slow teams down. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified when part two is released.